Live from Toronto, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering Blockchain Futurist Conference 2018. Brought to you by theCUBE. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Toronto for the Blockchain Futurist Conference put on by Untraceable. Tracy and her team do a fantastic job. So shout out to the team at Untraceable for another great event. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. My co-host Dave Vellante. We're here with CUBE friend, CUBE alumni, from the Crypto Chicks, Natalia Hearn, director. Um, good to see you, great to have you back. Thank you. Okay, good to <laughs> see you. you. We're laughing because we had some great funny stories we've been telling since Polycom, but really some great things going on. So give us the update. You had a hackathon recently. You've got new things happening. Your, your organization, take a quick minute to explain what it is for the folks that don't know, what you guys do, All right. and what's going on. Good, well, Crypto Chicks is a organization focused on educating women in blockchain and crypto space. We started because at meetups, there would be one or two women out of hundreds of men who would be afraid to ask stupid questions. So we said, okay, there's no stupid questions. Come and join us and we'll show you how to open a wallet, what blockchain is all about. So we've been doing that. We've actually grew quite a bit. We are now have chapters in all over the world, in Pakistan, in Bahamas, in Moscow. We just teamed up with uh, She Codes in Israel, which is 50,000 women. So um, we're doing really well. Congratulations, it's a great it's mission. Awesome. We totally support it. Um, and you know, I'm proud to say that I love my shirt that says Satoshi is female. Thanks to Nyla Rogers, gave it to me at Consensus and Blockchain Week in New York. But this is really beyond women in tech. It's beyond that. It's a really, you're doing some innovative things around onboarding new talent and education. Um, this is a really important because the internet is founded on discovery. Learning. Absolutely. What's the new thing? Well, you know what you hear, we go to this blockchain uh, conference and events, and we hear again and again about the chasm. How do we bridge the chasm, right? Mm. This is the, the big word that you hear like every third presentation, uh, because the blockchain community needs it. But I think globally, blockchain uh, represents something that's quite unique. And it's an opportunity not just to make money and speculate or to develop new technology. It's a technology that can liberate. But how do we get that message across? And I think we have to start with kids. Kids are our future, uh, but they're also the ones who spend most of their time on social media. So that's a good thing, but if you ask the parents, that's not such a good thing necessarily. So how do we convert them some of their time from social media to learning? So we've put, we're putting together this program that focuses on children to earn to learn. Earn we, to learn, like they earn coins or money or? That's right, basically they can learn, uh, earn swag. So basically we're creating uh, um, the um, marketplace uh, that rewards children for learning. All kids, right? All kids. Not well, we're focusing on- On uh, girls. Not on girls, we're going uh, to high school, so immediate right, next so, generation. So girls, boys, everybody's welcome. Absolutely, yep. Awesome. Next generation, and they're the next generation. That's to solve the problems that we, and opportunities can be captured that's coming right to their front door. Absolutely, we have a lot of question marks in the blockchain community. You know, which blockchain, how do we do it? Is it going to be multi-chain tokens? We're talking about, next generation is the one who's going to provide solutions for us. So we got to open their minds and to show that blockchain is a tool, like potentially calculus is a tool, yeah. right? To create something that hasn't been there before. You know, I have a lot of conversations in Silicon Valley and, and Natalia, recently at the Google Cloud event, Google's been very much a great, um, change agent, especially with women in tech and underrepresented minorities, but Aparna Signa, who's one of the senior people there, dual degrees from Stanford, she's got a PhD, she said we're losing the girls early. And what came out of it was a conversation that when you have these new market movements like blockchain, AI, these are new skills that you could level up. So the ability to come from behind and level up is an opportunity for people who have traditionally been behind, whether it's women or under to level up. So it's a huge opportunity now to put the naysayers down to, to rest and saying, screw you, we're going to level up and learn. Absolutely, and, and it's global. It's, the thing there's is, nothing stopping anyone from learning. The thing, absolutely, and, and, and trust and the borderless system that blockchain potentially can provide is a global advantage. You can be, as long as you have a cell phone, and you, and you can be in a village, remote village, like at our last um, 
hackathon, we actually were streaming women hackers from Zimbabwe. <laughs> so there you go, it's doable. Yeah. So how are, you, how are you scaling your message globally? So we're starting, one thing is that education today is, that, is basically the bill is being paid either by the governments or by parents. I would like, the reason I would call it a marketplace, I would like companies to be involved. And it could be local companies or it could be global. What about creating AR, VR classrooms? And uh, providing the information to kids via a completely new way that they would actually move away from swiping or just looking on some random YouTube videos to something that they can get a phone, some shoes, mascara, focusing on girls, right? I mean, you know, we, and, and to understand what that borderless economy really means by experiencing. What does it mean to have tokens that you can trade globally? You know, you're used to your parents giving you some dollars, you go to a corner store. What about if you learn something, you go to a bakery in Kenya, and for the work that you've done, you get a bun, yeah. right? Or a, a meal. So this democratizing well, access, it's bringing education to the masses. And it's also uniting the blockchain community because uh, we're, we would be building this uh, governance platform on blockchain, we would tokenize it, and, and there will be many elements of it, reward programs, uh, smart contracts that reward content, some level of AI in terms of analysis of what we're doing. So I, I think, you know, this is why I was looking at multi-chain tokens. Maybe that would be a solution uh, to kind of to deal with this. Explain this that, one. what does that mean? Well, we've got different chains right now, yeah. right? You've got Hyperledger, you've got Ethereum and all this kind of stuff. How do you bridge all this, right? Instead of having to choose one, um, you're now saying, I can work in all of them because each one potentially can offer something unique, right? So, um, Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't have to choose one. Yep. We don't know. You know, only time will tell. Yeah. As as this this is such a young industry, mm. and this is why it's so exciting. Well, the, the it, okay. No, as I say, and you're giving the, the the kids examples, right? So a lot of times, kids ask me, "Well, what's the difference between crypto and Venmo?" Yeah. I'm like, okay, you know, let's let's talk about the different things you can do with crypto that you can't do, but but they're closer than the older generations are to transferring, you know, money at least, and so now you're applying different use cases and expanding their minds in ways that perhaps. Absolutely. And I'll give you my example. I mean, I got into blockchain early before Ethereum was launched, uh -huh. and uh, partly I was in a public markets, and then I kind of stopped because th that project ended, or it, I stopped and I actually re-entered it because of my 15-year-old who started mining. And, but he started mining because I was in that field already. So there you go, it kind of, you know, what comes around, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good job. That's Hope he awesome. kept all his Bitcoin. Yeah, right, he did. So I want you to tell a story of what you've seen that's been high impact from your work you've done. You had, again, the whole Pakistan thing going on. You had all these hackathons. What is a good story you could share? You know, the good story we can share, I think the, the, the part that we were able to do the hackathons that we're doing are local, but they're also global. It really is, there's a sense of empowerment, and I, you know what I think the best story, this is the best story. The best story was at the hackathon that we ran, it was women, over 100 women that participated. But all our mentors were young, geeky programming guys, sorry guys, you, but you were really new, they really knew their stuff. So there was technology transfer, and we had a 40-hour hackathon. These guys stayed 48 hours, they didn't go to sleep, they didn't have to as mentors, and there was this amazing technology transfer that happened, and I think some relationships were Yeah, some too. serious bonding went yeah, on, right? That's well, actually a good thing, and you're including people. It's not just a certain thing. You're the inclusion. I, absolutely, it, it actually, all it is is about inclusion. All it is is we are giving a platform for women not to be afraid. I mean, I'm, I'm an engineer, so I've been working with men all my life, so it's for me to ask difficult questions or stupid questions, it's like natural now, because it's been what my yeah. life. But for women, for many, it isn't. Yeah. So we just wanted to kind of cross that divide. It's not a chasm, it's just a little divide that we're bridged. So when you say stupid question, you mean like, 
Why do you do it that way? <laughs> Why don't you do it this way? What's a wallet? <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what's a private key? What's yeah. a public key? Like, and asking that not once, but 20 times until you got it. That's okay yeah. too. That's called learning. Yeah. Ask questions. Okay, I got to ask you the most important question is, how do someone get a Crypto Chicks shirt? Um, I think you can order it on our website. Size isn't a problem. I know we've discussed this, so we need to. An extra uh, large. Well, Crypto Chicks is a non-for-profit organization, so they are, uh, we'll have to order this in bunches, so I'll figure this out. But what I wanted to say is that we have another hackathon that's coming up. And the hackathon is in New York, October 5th to 8th. And we have three streams. So if you're a developer, uh, and this is for women, so if you're a developer, we have a stream. If you're not a developer, or you've never coded in your life, and, but you have a business mind, and you think you have a really good uh, idea that you can put on blockchain, you're welcome to join as well. And now with all the news and regulations, we also have a regulatory stream. So and for entrepreneurs and for business-minded people that want to get involved, that they can come to. Absolutely. Okay, and the website is cryptochicks.ca. That's where you can get access to the information. That's great. October yes. 5th to 8th, you said, right? That's right. And anybody can go? Anybody can register. Where, where in New York? It's going to be at Univer University of New York and their uh, School of Law. Great. great. Blockchain Educational Fun Hub. That's what it says on the website. Love your website. Looking forward to getting some shirts and putting it out there and promoting your mission. Great job. Good to see you again. You guys are awesome. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. This is crypto for good, a lot of education, and this opportunity, and our, our role is to share that as a community, and I think this is a great example of the kind of community that crypto is. Education, people can level up and move fast through and get proficiency and change their lives. This is what it's all about. Glad to bring it to this CUBE coverage live. Stay with us, day one continues. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back from Toronto, Toronto Blockchain Futurist Summit. Thanks.